Hey, welcome to another video. This is Jordan from Hardcore Music Studio. And I'm gonna show you in this video how to use import session data in Pro Tools to copy your mix settings from one song to another. And this is a question I get somewhat often by people emailing in or commenting or whatever. And they're asking, you know, if I'm mixing a whole album or just really just more than one song with, you know, that's all been tracked to the same, it's gonna end up on the same project in the end. And you basically want the same starting point for each mix. Um, you know, do you record everything in the same session to keep all the settings the same? Or how do you, you know, how do you not have to start every song from scratch, right? And doing all the same moves over and over again. So the answer to this is pretty simple. So I do not mix or record everything in the same session. I think it's just way too much of a mess. Um, you know, it'll just be really hard to, to organize everything and your session could just be huge, right? And you'll be always fighting against track counts and computer processing power and all that. So I definitely have a separate session for every song on a project. Now, when it comes to mixing, what I'll do is I'll mix the first song, you know, whatever song I'm working on first from start to finish, basically like completely. And then I will use the import session data function to import all of those plugin chains, plugin settings, volume settings, almost everything into the next song. But then there's a few little tweaks I do after that, you know, to, to, make this not be more of a hassle than not um, because you know with if it's copying automation and stuff it can make things a little more difficult um, but I'm going to show you exactly how I do it so let's just check out a song that I've got here the artist here is uh, named Nick Johnston great guitar player writes some some great stuff here so let's just check out a little section here just to to show you what the finished mix is <laughs> Okay, so that's a finished mix. So let's say I've mixed that song first. It's done, I'm ready to move on to the next song. So we're gonna close up this session and let me open up another one here. So this is an example of a session that is basically untouched. So um, you can see everything's, all the faders are at zero here. Some things are panned, but basically everything's at zero. There's no plugins or anything here. Now the key to doing this effectively is before you actually import all your settings is you need to make sure you organize and name your tracks. So if your tracks aren't named the same from session to session, then they're not gonna copy over properly as you'll see. So before I import all the session data, first I'll go through and clean up. You can see how you know everything's raw here, but it's all named clearly, you know, kick, snare top, snare bottom, toms, et cetera, bass DI, you know, everything is basically pared down to how I had it in the initial mix and I've used the same track names and that's gonna be crucial here. But once you get that together, what you're gonna do is on a Mac, it's um, option shift I, which brings in up a, a menu here or a dialog that says choose file to import session data from. Now you can also find this in file import session data. So I'm gonna to go to the session I was just in, which is this one right here, double click it. So this is the import session data dialog box. So most of this stuff you don't have to worry about unless you know, you're know you kind of working across different things or different sample rates or whatever, but we won't get into that. But there's some settings here that you wanna pay attention to for sure. So this is a different song, so we do not wanna import the tempo. Um, I don't import any of that stuff because this is all you know things that are very specific to each song, right? So what we're gonna do is hit match tracks. So that's automatically gonna find tracks that have the same or similar name in the old session to the new one, and it's gonna copy all the settings over that we choose onto those tracks. In the old session, or sorry, in the finished mix session, we also had tracks that were created. So we've got like a kick sample track, a kick trigger track that aren't in this new one. So I'm gonna bring those in as well. So you can see that the kick track, it's matching to the same track named kick in this section. Kick trigger, same thing. D4 kick, that's a sample I'm using and I haven't laid in samples in this one yet. So I'm gonna import that track so I have that empty track to put the sample in. We got a VCA track that I'm gonna import. We've got another snare sample, a snare VCA, some snare reverbs that I'm gonna import in as new tracks. You can see our toms are all matched up here. Here's a mismatch here. You see I've named it HH in the old session, right? And it's not matched up to anything. So make sure you take notice of that. You've got the track called Hats here. On this session so that's just a, a name a track naming thing that i mi missed so i'll just match that hh to the hats track 
overheads, ride room. So you just go through this quickly, import the tracks that are relevant. So my drum aux tracks, you know, I've got a parallel compression track called Crush and a drum bus. Um, so we're going to import those in. Let's keep going here. So you can see some old, some tracks in the session I'm importing from do not exist in this one, like a tambourine track. There's no tambourine in the song, so we don't bring that in. There's no radio clip, stuff like that. The bass we do bring in, and we're going to bring in our bass aux as well. The acoustics are all matching up by name there, so we'll bring those in. And the acoustic guitar aux, same with all the rhythm guitars here. Now, for the leads and everything, you know, it's trying to match some tracks here that are just not relevant. Um, these are just kind of extra lead tracks that exist in the old session, but not in this one. So we're not going to bring those in. And same with this solo. Like, I, I don't want to copy the solo settings from song to song because, you know, I want to feel those out and mix it uniquely um, for each song. So I'm not going to copy in this, the solos. The piano, I am definitely going to copy in. And then there's some just um, some other ambient tracks here that don't exist in this song. So we're going to ignore those and then we're going to bring in all of our reverb returns here as new tracks. And we're going to match our master to the master track and we're going to bring in a print track as well. So basically you don't have to import like every single track. Like there's some that I want to keep the same. So drums, bass, rhythm guitars, and like lead vocals and background vocals. I will usually import all the data from when it comes to extra layers like synths, certain lead guitars, solos, extra stuff like that that is unique from song to song i'm not going to bother importing those i'm going to you know work with those in the session so that each you know each song has to have its own unique vibe this is think of this as like the starting point it's going to take a clear up a bunch of time of like just getting the mix back to that or up to that kind of initial starting point that you mix from now we don't want to just hit okay right now there's important settings here so main playlist options the main playlist being the actual audio track that's on or the actual audio file that's on the track right so replace existing playlist. No, we do not want to bring in the actual audio from that session. We just want to bring in the settings, right? And the routing and all that stuff, the mix settings, not the actual audio track because it's, it's a different song. So main playlist option, do not import. We also don't need to import any files or playlists. So we're going to deselect that clips in media, clip gain, clip effects. We don't need any of that, but look at everything else here. So from time to time you might do different things too like maybe you just need to import the plugin settings and nothing else or maybe you just need to import the sends wherever you're at in your mix but from the starting point usually i'm importing everything here so volume settings pan settings mute settings main output send outputs plugin assignments plugin settings and automation make sure if you're importing plugin settings you got to have both of these selected plugin assignments that's just gonna be the actual inserts on the track and then the settings and automation is the actual plugin settings that you've chosen in inside that plugin a bunch of different stuff here um track colors group i import all that stuff so 90 percent of the time i'm just deselecting the actual media parts the actual audio file imports and i'm importing everything else so let's go for it here this might take a second as it's adding all the new tracks bringing them all in one plugin wasn't found that's okay all right, so now you can see, look at all our faders here. We've got the same balance on the faders as we had in the last mix, same panning, same outputs as well for everything that was matched. So from here, it's just kind of reorganizing stuff. So everything I imported is showing up here to the right of the session. So I want to put these in the proper order. So let's put all of our drum stuff. Let's drag these drum tracks back. Just try to do this real quick just to keep it clean for you. Here's our D4 kick. So we still have to lay in that sample here on this session, but we'll just leave it for now. Here's my snare sample. Here's my snare reverbs, which I like to have over here. My drum bus, my parallel compression. You can see these are all going up the drum bus coming in here. I've got all of my sends here as well, and all my plugins have come over. Let's also bring over the bass aux right there, the acoustic guitar aux. And then all our reverb returns are at the end. Here's our print where we're going to monitor the track. And then there's just some tracks that we didn't match. So remember, some of them weren't relevant to match. And you'll see that those are still going out my output one and two, where everything else is going out my mix bus since I imported those. So I just make sure that I put those tracks at the mix bus that weren't imported. Okay, so if I hit play now, we should have a mix that is sounding, you know, we've got basically... 75% there. We've got the foundation copied over. Let's check it out. So 
So we've got our drums. That's our mixed drum settings. Got our bass. Ah, one important key I forgot to do first here. So you see that I've imported, kind of the side effect of importing all the volume settings is that you're also importing all of the automation here, which is obviously not unique to this song. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna zoom this out so I can see everything. I select the all group here. You switch to the volume view. So I'm gonna select all of the tracks, all of the automation. Now here's a handy tool here, you go to edit, clear special, all automation. So boom, plug in automation, volume automation, pan automation, everything gets deleted there. So now what you have is a clean slate to start this mix from, but you've got all of your, your basic core balance, like what I call the static mix. So you've got your plugin settings, your reverbs, your effects, your volume settings, the pans, um, all that stuff is set, but you've removed kind of all the extra stuff that's unique to this song being, you know, volume automation and stuff like that and tracks that we still have to process like the extra layers and solos that I've muted here. So let's check it out. There we go. So now the mix is more together that I've cleared that automation. And this is a starting point, right? So now I can continue mixing this song. So I can bring in, you know, this lead guitar track. Do what I want with that. I can adjust the balance Start from this starting point. I can start doing some automation. I still got to put in my drum samples and everything there. Um, but you can see how this saves so much time. I mean, look at how many plugins, you know, I've got all these aux tracks, the reverbs, the, the buses for the, dr the drums, the bass, the guitars, all of our sends, you know, all of these plugins where, you know, we don't have to try and mimic that from song to song. You just use the import session data function to bring all that stuff into the next song in Pro Tools, clear out the automation, and then keep working on it. And by doing this, you can cut down a lot of time if you're mixing, you know, an EP or just multiple songs that all have the same source tones, basically. For most records you want, you know, you want the drums to sound consistent from song to song if they're all recorded at the same time. But this is just a really uh, handy time-saving trick. This will allow you, as you're working through a whole album, to mix multiple songs in a day because you're not starting totally from scratch all the time. So just to recap, just make sure that you, uh, on the new mix session that you're bringing all the settings into, make sure that you cl make, clean it up, organize it, name all the tracks the same. Make sure you, you know, double check the settings of what you're importing here. Um, you know, specifically, you know, you don't want to import the playlist. You don't want to import the clips in the media. You just want the plugin settings and everything. So hopefully that clears up the question of, you know, how, how do you import settings or copy settings from one song to another in order to mix faster and not do the same thing over and over again. This is how I do it in Pro Tools using import session data. Hope you enjoyed this, guys. If you want more of these tips, definitely subscribe to the channel. And if you want more mixing, engineering, producing tricks, you know, I don't just talk about Pro Tools. Um, all my courses are geared towards any DAW. I've got hundreds and thousands of students and followers who use all different DAWs. You know, this, this, these Pro Tools YouTube tips are just for specific Pro Tools users because people enjoy it. But just know that my stuff, you know, my actual mixing tutorials and courses are not Pro Tools specific. They're, they, are useful for using any DAW out there. And uh, if you wanna get more of that stuff, make sure you join my email list and download your free mixing cheat sheet at makebetterrecords.com. That's where all the best stuff is. You're gonna get a ton of freebies by signing up there if you're not there already. All right, please share this with someone who uh, could need to see it. And otherwise, we'll see you again next time.